Virtual Football Clinic is excited to offer you another free, great coaching clinic. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Okay, so the next speaker is Sheriff Nicola, head coach, uh, OC, and QB coach at Deshraf. So, Sheriff, go ahead. So, uh, I'm going to be talking to you today about uh, uh, evaluating quarterbacks. For those who don't know me, I'm the uh, head coach, offensive coordinator, and quarterback coach at uh, the University of uh, Bishops. Um, it, it's a big, uh, big load, but, uh, you know, I feel that, uh, uh, you know, I have a passion for coaching offense and quarterbacks and, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, things just happen and you're, uh, you're asked to take it. So I'm going to take you through our, um, our evaluation process for the quarterbacks and, uh, and how we, uh, we kind of look at it. This is more about, um, how we, how we look at our quarterbacks internally and how you can look at your quarterbacks internally, but it also uh, can work for um, evaluating quarterbacks in terms of uh, your recruiting process for those who have to, to recruit. So uh, two seconds, I'm just trying to clear up something on my screen here that's obstructing my view. Give me two seconds. All right, we'll be able to go just Ah, there we go. All right, now we're clear to move. Okay, so why do we want to evaluate quarterbacks? I know I'm, I'm going back to the basics and some, some stuff can be uh, pretty obvious there, but to me, knowledge is power. Uh, knowledge is power in terms of, um, you know, your Q, what your QB needs to know, what he needs to know to work on, what he needs to know he's good at, uh, and that he continues to maintain. So it's important for him to know uh, what you're expecting of him. Also, uh, you knowing their strengths and weaknesses will help you in terms of game plan, offensive design, uh, creating packages for some guys that might be uh, efficient at something or another, uh, uh, but not as efficient in something else. Um, also, for me, creating an evaluation process is also about trying to strive to have an objective picture of your QBs as objective as possible, all right? Sometimes we all fall in love with players, uh, you know, where we feel something is, is, is what it's not. And I think it's important if you have a, a real specific um, uh, picture and it's objective and you, can, uh, you, could, uh, you could perform better as a coach and choose the right guys to be on the field. Um, it helps QB room cohesion. If everybody's evaluated and everybody knows where they fit in and what they need to work on, the whole QB room is going to be better for it. There's not going to be that, you know, unhealthy competition. You want competition. You don't want help unhealthy competition. It also helps locker room cohesion. I've been on a number of teams as a player, especially where the room was divided on who the, uh, you know, who the QB should be. And don't, don't get it twisted. Everybody in that locker room has an opinion on who should be playing quarterback if you've got a, a tight competition or, or two guys that are pretty close. And I think if the QB room is cohesive, then the locker room will be cohesive. And eva QB evaluation plays a big role in that. Um, it also – now I'm going to talk to you about quarterback evaluation today, but we have a process for evaluating every player, okay, that, that – you know, from, from every position, we have an evaluation process for them. So, um, you know, building an evaluation process, it also builds an evaluation language. And I think that's been uh, a great help to our staff when discussing prospects, uh, whether they're on the team uh, or they're uh, just coming in or we're recruiting them. So let's get into it. Um, what does the process look like to get this evaluation done? First, you got to choose your eval type. Okay, what are you going to actually evaluate? And I'll talk about how we do it. Um, but I'm talking here about the traits you want to evaluate in a quarterback and also the scale you want to use to evaluate them. All right. Um, got to, what kind of tagging do you need to do in terms of your video software in order to achieve that? Uh, how are you grading plays? What are you grading? Are you only doing it, you know, at the end of a season or a camp, or are you grading the, the film every day? Obviously, the most effective thing 
is you're grading that film every day and then compiling stats and compiling grades um, throughout the season, throughout camps and throughout the season. All right. Uh, we're going to talk about your ability to organize play cutups so that you could actually pull the data uh, and analyze it. And that, that means you need to create the proper cutups. All right. Or those who use huddle, I think you guys call them playlists. All right. So creating playlists. Um, and then something that uh, I do here at Bishops is I create a throw map and I'll show you an example of that, but what does that look like? And then finally, fill out the evaluation form that you've created and you assign a grade. And to me, it's important to assign a grade to the player, just like they do in the pros and the draft process. You want to give him a grade. Where does he stand? Does he have a starter grade? Does he have a backup grade? Does he have a, um, a really elite grade? You want to know where does he fit in, uh, in the scheme. Evaluation is about comparison. All right, so you want to know where he kind of uh, fits in. So let's start uh, choosing the eval type, traits and scale. So he's an 11 trait evaluation process, okay? So we look at 11 uh, things that the, the quarterback can do, all right? Uh, this is the, our, our traits uh, come from the Scouting Academy. For those who don't know what the Scouting Academy is, it's an online scouting course uh, that uh, that's available to anybody. Um, they regularly put uh, scouts in both uh, the NFL, the CFL, and also uh, in the, um, uh, in the NCAA. Uh, a lot of these, the big schools have a recruiting uh, and scout uh, department. Uh, and, and so some of these guys that take these scouting Academy template uh, or the Scouting Academy course can uh, can go there. One of the things with the Scouting Academy, I mean, if you're a young coach, it's something that uh, it's definitely interesting uh, for you to build uh, a bit of your knowledge about football and multiple positions because you get to do every position uh, when you do the course. Uh, like I said, it's used, the, the, the traits that we use in this system is used by several pro scouting departments. Um, we chose a one to seven scale. It happens to be the one that's used by the scouting Academy, but I've heard about, you know, some pro teams using up to a nine scale and as low as a five scale. Now this there's research that shows that you're really rarely going to use the bottom, uh, grade and rarely use the top grade. So when you're on a seven grade, you're really talking about a five grade. And when you're on nine, you're really talking about a seven. So if you would go down to a five uh, grade scale, the issue is you're really now following to a three grade scale. You're mostly, most probably gonna give kids either a two or three or four. You're gonna leave the five and the one away. So in a, in a seven scale, you, need, you get enough variation, but it's not, uh, it's not too large. Uh, I talked about assigning the grade to complete the process. Now, like anything, there's a margin of error. Uh, this is not a mattering rating, okay? It's a holistic evaluation. It's more art than science, okay? And, and evaluating, and that's why, uh, you know, whether you're scouting quarterbacks or any other positions, but I think in quarterbacks, we seem to see it more often. Um, there's a high failure rate. OK, and it's not it, like I said, it's not a science. It's an art. OK, so what do we look at? Which traits do we look at? OK, we're going to talk about talent versus skill. Talent is uh, God given or nature given if you don't want to talk about God, but it's what he's bringing to the table as a player. It doesn't mean he can't get better at it, but it's what he's bringing to the table in terms of his talent. So. We're going to talk about mental processing, competitive toughness, athletic ability, play speed, and play strength. And I'll get into a bit more detail about each one. In the skill part, we're talking about quarterback skills. We're talking about accuracy, poise, decision-making, arm strength, extending the ability to extend plays. And can he be the CEO for the offense and the team? All right. Um, these are actually in the order of – uh, priority, okay, meaning that we value mental processing for a quarterback more than play strength. 
okay? And we val value ac accuracy, for example, more than arm strength, okay? So if we look at what we're kind of looking at here, so mental processing, you know, the first thing is, can he take what we teach him in the classroom and take it to the field, okay? The second thing is, is he a quick learner? That, you know, do you see progression from practice to practice? Is he getting better or is he repeatedly making the same mistakes, all right? Um, his situational awareness, all right? How is he looking at, you know, is he conscious? Is it first down? Is it second down? Is it second and short? Are we leading in the game? How much time is left? What's the score? All these things are, are things that I expect the quarterback uh, to, uh, to know and be conscious of, all right? Can he read, you know, we're, we're um type of no huddle offense or we don't huddle? Uh, and, and so, you know, can he read and translate the signals properly? All right. Uh, you know, I've heard about quarterbacks that uh, have to flip the play. The, the play on the wristband is, you know, they're all right hash or left hash. And, you know, when they get the signal, they have to flip it. Some guys have difficulty doing that, you know, going from 360 protection to 361 protection on their on their wristband or flipping the formation from spread right to spread left. Um, that could be a, a that's mental processing. And then we also add his pre-snap recognition skills in there. Competitive toughness. I'm going to go faster because I want to get to the end. I want to make sure that I have enough time. But, you know, is he mentally and physically tough? Is he an aggressive football player or is he passive? Is he consistent? All right. Does he perform on big downs, big moments? All right. Or does he turtle? How about plays after critical mistakes? All right. After he throws an interception in that practice, is he done? Or can he bounce back? What about in a game? What about in a championship game? All right. Athletic ability. We're talking about quickness, agility, balance, and explosiveness. We are not necessarily talking about pure foot speed here. Now, you could have a comment about his foot speed in there, but that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at agility, and I'm not a kinesiologist, but this is the way we've simplified it for our staff. When we're talking about agility, it's the ability to accelerate or decelerate and change of direction proactively, meaning you know where you're going and you're able to execute it, okay? Quickness for us is a reaction, okay? It's a change of body position with maximum force uh, rate production. Just think about it as, can he react to something he's seeing? A defender coming to him, can he avoid him using, uh, using his athletic ability? It's more reactive. Play, sp play speed, again, we're not talking about his foot speed. It's really a combination of his athletic ability and his mental processing, all right? And does he have enough to execute the plays within the timeline that we need him to execute it, all right? Um, can he identify the defense and decide pre-snap? Can he grip and rip? How is he in his drops? Can he be efficient in his drops, okay? So we're, if you're looking at a three-step drop from the gun for us, he's got to make it back there in 1.8 seconds. All right, from the moment the ball is, you know, from the moment the ball is snapped, can he get back there in 1.8 seconds? Or does it take him 1.95 or two, okay? Um, so like I said, it's an MP and AA uh, mental processing and athletic ability combo, all right? Uh, play strength, you know, for a quarterback, does he, you know, can he be strong enough to withstand hits, all right? Uh, and what about his core strength to support his throws? Okay, so that's kind of what we're looking at there. Um, when we look at the talent accuracy, okay, so there's two different aspects of accuracy. There's the optimal location of each throws, okay? So is he throwing it to the appropriate shoulder? Is he throwing it, um, uh, you know, in, out, depending on what you need? Is he, can he make that throw in the cookie shelf when the DB, you know, where the DB can't get it, um, you know, can he hit different uh, field zones? Can he hit moving versus stationary targets? Can he protect the receiver? Okay. Avoid interception, maximize the opportunity. So all this we look at, okay. We also look at the adjust, the adjusted completion rate. Okay. What's the adjusted completion rate to me, if a quarterback makes a throw, a good one and the, the receiver drops it, that's not on him. I can't tell him you're not an accurate quarterback. That's why I feel completion rate does not give you the, 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 the picture of a quarterback's accuracy. You can have really good receivers, 
with a quarterback that could miss and they're always going to make him look good, but he's not actually good. And the moment you don't have those receivers in the game, it's going to cost you. Or uh, you could have a, 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 a football player that, you know, uh, has just a lot of drops. Okay. We had one last camp. I think he had something like 15 drops from his receivers. Well, that's going to strongly affect his, um, uh, his completion rate. So I like adjusted completion rate. Uh, poise, the best way, and it's uh, Peyton Manning that said it, and I kept it. It's like when preparation meets the moment. So does your quarterback prepare? And when he's prepared, can he maintain that uh, throughout? Um, uh, can he main, maintain regardless of the uh, regardless of the situation? Can he maintain that? Uh, his decision making. We're looking now if mental processing was a bit of the pre-snap stuff. When we're looking at decision making, we're we're talking about decision post snap. So once the read has moved, once his key has moved, whatever you're using as a staff to 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 help the quarterback navigate through a play, well, is he able to do it? Okay, can he determine the best course of action depending on what he uh, he has? Okay, so um, arm strength. We're looking at you know, yeah, can he third? Obviously, can he throw the ball vertically? But some guys can throw those three arced balls uh, pretty easily. Okay. So if I'm talking about arcs, just so we're all on the same page to me, zero is like that touch pass. All right. Then you have one, which is driving the ball with no air underneath. Two would be that ball that you just want to get over the linebackers, but beneath the DBs. And three would be that fade ball, corner ball uh, that you're trying to hit vertically. You know, when the field is big in Canada, can you hit the field side with effectiveness? Okay. Um, can you throw window throws in there? All right. His ability to extend the plays, we'll look at, you know, inside the pocket, outside the pocket. And then the CEO of the defense is just a trait. You have to look in day in, day out. What's his behavior? How is How does his teammates look at him? At the end of the day, there's always a question I ask myself. Does he make the players around him better? Can he make the offense better? Can he make the whole team better? All right. Um, when we're talking about the grading scale, we use, I said, we, we make it, we use a seven grade scale. I'm going to start at the mid middle of this grading scale, which is the solid grade. Okay. So a four means he's average in terms of the other starters in the league. So if we're grading, a quarterback, uh, you know, on each trade, but if on a given trade we give him a four, we mean we feel like he's at level with the rest of you, you sports starters at that. Okay, so average or solid is not a bad grade. That's that's the grade you're looking for in a starter. Okay, so if we move up from there, you have good. We feel he's above average. Okay, so think about like Tannehill's arm strength or Wentz's athletic ability or Burrow's mental processing, those guys. And again, we could argue about whether they're actually a five or not, but those guys, you know, Tannehill had, I think, 14 uh, throws over 40 yards, for example. You know, I could argue that his arm strength is good. OK, um, you know, very good is a rare ability. OK, think Rogers accuracy or Stafford's poise. Okay, those guys have demonstrated over and over again that they're very good at those. Okay, elite, without being a unicorn. Okay, I, I, you know we haven't we gave we when we did all the players at all the positions, we gave a seven to one guy on one trait. That's it. Okay, he was the you know one of the best we've ever seen at doing that thing. Uh, you know, uh, for his position. Um, but you're talking about unique ability. Think Lamar Jackson's athletic ability or Mahomes, his ability to extend plays or Brady's mental processing and competitive toughness. I think those guys can arguably be elite. Now, when you're comparing, when you're giving a grade, again, you have to place the quarterback at the center, not only of your group, uh, of your group that you have on your present team, but you have to look at him to us compared to the rest of the field. So it could be you could decide to do it on a conference level uh, if you're playing in different conferences, or you could look at it as, hey, I want the whole field, and that's why we, what we choose to do. Okay, if we go under, you've got the adequate. So he's below average trait, 
uh, you know, probably think of the worst trade of any of uh, any of the guys playing in the NFL. Probably, uh, you know, they're adequate at the worst thing they can do. All right. So, you know, Lamar Jackson's accuracy, I think he had 64 percent. Sorry about the to all the Raven fans, um, you know, and again, uh, completion record is, uh, you know, completion uh, percentage is not the, the be all and end all, but I need an example. So I gave you one, uh, you know, marginal is like the minimum ability at that position to be at that trait to be functional at quarterbacking. Okay. So, you know, if you're giving a two grade on arm strength to somebody, you're basically saying if his arm, if we get a prospect's arm, that's weaker than that. He cannot play at the U sport level. Okay. I'm talking for U sport. That's the one I know best. All right. And then poor doesn't meet the minimal requirement. Honestly, if a guy gets a, a one somewhere in his evaluation, and unless it's something you feel you could really improve and get him in that two, at least three grade, then you're probably not looking at a quarterback that could develop at this level. Okay. At the level you're at. All right. Again, in any league, all right, the, the, the number of solid players, if you look at this graph, will be higher than the rest. It's like a bell curve. Everything should fall on the bell curve, okay? So, again, uh, statistically, you cannot have more elite players than solid players. Then you have to change how you're looking at your grading system or how you're handing out grades, Okay. Most starters will fall around that four area, okay? All right, tagging plays. I'm going to go real quick here. but We like to tag what film type you're looking at, all right? For example, we didn't have a games last year, so we looked at, you know, Skelly film and 12 versus 12 film, all right? Uh, you could be in a camp setting. You could look at, game, you know, scrimmage and team periods. You could add Skelly, whatever you want, but... I like to I like to differentiate my grades depending on what I'm looking at. I expect him to be better in seven on seven, for example, than uh, in a scrimmage or in a twelve on twelve period. And as much as I can, I want to get those closer. So tracking his statistics and his grades throughout those two shows me a bit of his development and where what we have to work on too. All right, um, obviously run pass down in distance gain. Efficiency means, you know, was the play productive? So we all have different probably schedules uh, in terms of what we want to be productive, depending on if you're playing three downs or four downs, but you're going to have efficiency. Best way to example, you know, to, 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 uh, to explain this is if it's third down, you want the first down. Okay. So any throw that gets him that efficiency will make him productive or will be uh, will be efficient. Anything under will be not efficient. Okay. What's the play call? What's the play type? Okay. So you could divide this as many things as you want. The ones I mostly use are dropbacks, quicks, RPO, screen, uh, runs, hard runs, uh, play action, and read option. Okay. So I'll, I'll grade him on every one of those. Uh, I want to track what route he threw, whether it's a completion or not. I want to track that. And I want to track the arc he throws on each throw. All right, not just completions. Every every uh, every throw will be tracked. And then the one that takes a long time, unless I don't know uh, if XOs does it, but I know on DV Sport it's pretty easy to calculate release times. Uh, you just click on a button to reset the snap, and then you let it roll until the release time, and uh, you've got your release time. It's automatically put in the proper column. So we track release times, but you could do that, uh, you know, from the film, you could probably find a way to, to do that quite easily. Okay. And then we track the past result. We want to go no, and I try to minimize those. I know some people like to do uh, a lot more categories. I like to hold myself to completions, incompletions, interceptions, whether it was batted down or not. Was it a drop and was it a sack? All right. So those are the things we're going to look at. A grading plays. Okay. Like I said, I prefer the progressive method, but sometimes uh, in a camp setting, you might, you know, wait three, four practices and then grade those three, four or whatnot. It depends on your time. 
obviously I'm the head coach, the QB coach, the OC. Uh, sometimes I have to uh, cluster my, uh, my grading, uh, although I correct the film every day. Um, so for each player, uh, for each play, this is what we grade. We grade his footwork or his play mechanics. So on a run play, for example, did he take the proper footwork? Did he hand the ball off properly? And did he finish properly? That's the play mechanics. I'm not talking about throwing mechanics. For his footwork, you know, is he taking the proper drop, all right, uh, in, in the passing game, all right? Um, so I will give, sorry, I will give him a score of 1.5 or 0, okay? Sometimes there's a reason, you know, sometimes you watch film and you go, I, you know what, I see what he was seeing. I see why he, he thought a blitz was coming. He didn't go through his full drop. You know, but honestly, he should have kept it. I'll give him a 0.5. I won't give him a one. Uh, so sometimes there's just a little thing that I want him to finish to do better. I'll give him a 0.5. On his read, the same thing. Sometimes uh, I'll give him a, a 0.5 if, for example, he bypasses a receiver I thought he could have made that throw to, um, you know, uh, but he still completed it to, to the next progression. Uh, I'll give him a 0.5 for that, but I'll still dock him for not taking the, you know, the rhythm route or whatever you're, you're using for, for terminology. Okay. Accuracy. I'm really looking at optimal ball placement. Okay. So a one means he put it at the right spot. The receiver caught it. Okay. Even if it's a drop, but he put it at the right spot, he's going to get a one. A 0. 0.5 is it wasn't really optimal, but the receiver still caught it. I'll give him a 0. 0.5 for that. And zero is he missed. Productivity. Again, was the play efficient? I'll give him a one or a zero. There's no 0. 0.5s there. Okay. And then finally, like I said, I'll give him an arc score. So zero, one, two, three. Okay. That doesn't end up being in the final play grade, but when we get to the uh to the uh, route map or the throw map, uh, this will be very valuable information. Okay, you wanna you wanna be uh, you wanna be able to create playlists or cutups by QB. Okay, also by play type. So that's uh, is it a drop back, a quick, and all the, uh, you know an RPO. You wanna be able to break it down by periods so 12 on 12 periods or all the skelly periods you want to be able to get it by what routes he's thrown okay and then release time now i'll have to make a comment about release time everybody has a bit of their own passing timeline okay so you know we expect for example the the ball to be out on a three-step drop the ball to be out okay by 2.2 seconds all right uh, the next progression uh, would be 2.6, and the next progression after that uh, would bring you to three. Okay, so we want him to get the ball out of his hands uh, under three seconds to three receivers. Okay, so that's our timeline. In the quicks timeline, it's shorter. All right, but that's what you're that's what you're trying to measure. So know your timeline so you can evaluate those release type, and then create a cut up by ball art. Okay, so where does that uh, bring us in terms of uh, the reporting that we want to create? And this is the first report that you're really going to study. Uh, we have this QB here who's a fictional QB on our team, a number 18 party, um, you know, age 23, he's a senior, he's got two years left because in Canada we can play five, all right? So on the left-hand side, or my left-hand side, I don't know if you sure had, but we got the 12-on-12 12 12 performance in terms of passing, okay? And on the right, we have the Skelly performance uh, for passing. So if I look at the 12-on-12 12 12 first, his grade for footworks and mechanics is 81.5%. So this player took a proper footwork uh, or ran the proper play mechanics at 81%. At the, of the time, okay? He completed the correct read 73.8% of the time, all right? And right now, I can tell you, if we compare those two to his Skelly performance, you already have an indicator 
all right, on mental processing and decision making, because in the Skelly for, uh, part of it, he had 95.7% and his read was 82.4%. So there's a 15% and a, and a 10% increase there. So right now I know this player still has some development to do in terms of how he's navigating through things. Okay. Now his accuracy grade is 52.7. Again, we're not looking at his completion rate here. We're looking at, did he put the ball at the right spot? Again, there's a 10 or 12% difference between uh, his accuracy in terms of 12 on 12 versus Skelly. All right. And then productivity, the same thing. Uh, we could see he's at 57.7% uh, to 67.7%. Okay. And that allows me to get at the end of the day, an overall play grade. Okay. So I know this guy, his grade is 62.27 in terms of pure grading. All right. Then I can look at his stats, common stats that you could just compile. So he's 51 for 86, 59.3%, uh, 696 yards, uh, 8.1. He had two picks, four TDs, seven drops, four sacks. And his adjusted completion record is 67. Uh, completion record. Completion um, percentage is 67.44. Just look at his adjusted in terms of the Skelly, he's at 75.3. Now, you could have a different metric. I like his adjusted to be somewhere, you know, in the 70s. I, I would consider that, a, you know, a, a, an acceptable or a, a, a solid uh, completion rate, okay? Now, you might say, no, you know, I throw a lot of bubbles and screens and stuff. I want that to be at 75%, okay? Um, you could also track that, all right? Then we'll go down. We look at his release times, all right? So in, in the drop back game, he averages 2.8 seconds, all right? Uh, in the Skelly, he averages 2.7 uh, um, uh, seconds. So just based on that, you know, I can tell that he's not one of those guys that holds the ball longer in Skelly. Right, he gets rid of it in in sufficient enough time to uh, uh, to get the ball out. Is he because he's he's reading more effectively? That's something I would like to look at. Uh, can we can we accelerate him a bit in the drop back game to catch up? All right, and the RPO game. You know, for all those guys who are worried about RPOs and, and all that, you know, our average release time here is one point nine seconds uh, for this. Uh, specific quarterback. So he's still getting rid of the ball under two seconds here on, on these RPO throws. And that's throws that he's putting the ball in the mesh. Uh, we're not talking about the gift throw where he's just catching the ball and throwing the, the gift that the defense is given. Um, you know, and all his, uh, all his scores kind of correlate in play action. You know, it's normal. It's going to take a little more time. Uh, to protect it and to get it. So we, he's got a 3.0 second. In quicks, he's at 1.9. I'd like that to be a little uh, faster. And you look at, you know, this is one thing. You look at his Skelly, uh, he's, he's too high. Okay, so 2.3, all right, which he needs to lower. Okay, uh, screens 1.9, read option 3.2 when we're, read optioning and throwing a ball. So that's normal that the timeline is a little longer. Okay. Um, we'll also look at his average grade by play type. And I think that's huge to know what your quarterback's good at, right? So when you look at, uh, at this cat here, you know, 65% in the drop back, 69% in the RPO game, 53% in the play action. And then you get to quicks, he's at 83% now, or 84 almost. Now, it's normal to me that in the quick game, you're more efficient. What's interesting is that although he takes more time to throw the ball in the quick game during Skelly, his efficiency goes down. So that's something that, you know, when I do the evaluation with uh, Luke, I'm going to tell him, hey, Luke, you know, you're holding on to the ball longer. 
but you're not really more efficient. So let's get, you know, grip it, take your footwork and rip it. Okay. So again, putting the information, the data, once you've pulled it out, that's where the art starts. And by looking at the, these numbers, you're going to be able to, uh, uh, to actually get a good feel for what's, uh, what's going on. All right. Uh, again, for me, uh, these are critical stats. You could have your own. Uh, you could look at the gains per type. You could look at his efficiency per play type. All those things could go in. This is kind of like the base report card that I like to give them. All right. Okay. Creating the throw map. This is what a throw map looks like. Uh, and let, let me go through it a little with you. So the location isn't exact. All right. On the field, the depths are close, but it's not, you know, for example, if I'm talking about this, uh, I don't know if you could see the cursor, but this cherry route, uh, it doesn't mean it's thrown exactly there, but it's in that area that it's going to be thrown, all right? Um, so we will look at each one of its throws and, and mark a couple of things here. So if it's green, his completion record, you know, his completion is good. Um, you know, his time of release is good and his arcs are usually good, okay, for that kind of throw. Uh, so all these throws be behind the line of scrimmage here, this guy, I could conclude that he's doing pretty good. All right. Um, let's look at this red one here real quick. The fin route, he was 0 for 2. He took 3.1 seconds to, to throw it on average. Uh, with the one arc, he was 0 for 1, 2.7 seconds with the two arc. Now, I could have flipped that one orange just because there's not a lot of data. He missed on it twice. Uh, but can I really conclude, you know, he's got a bunch of greens around it. You can see as it gets to the field here, you know, he's got two oranges, three oranges, and a red, right? And you'll have the throw map of – your number two guy, your number three guy, your number four guy, you'll be able to compare where, where they get in trouble. All right. Obviously, you know, something we need to work on with this imaginary cat is, you know, his deep ball to the boundary, no doubt. Okay. He was one for four on the corner, 0 for two on the fade, one for three on the out and up, and 0 for two on the stutter. Uh, again, you'll have your own names uh, for each one of these. But again, it's really interesting, um, you know, what arcs he's throwing. He drives the ball. You know, when you look at these digs, he's got – he went four for five throwing a pretty straight ball on the big curl. Uh, and on the dig, he went two for three throwing a pretty uh, straight ball, which tells me that this is just something he needs to work on. It's not a question of arm strength. It's a question of just calibrating his arm in terms of uh, getting it there, right? Things of concern, this should have flipped white here, this three arc, okay? I should have flipped it uh, white because we don't want, for example, on this bender route to throw three arcs because the safety is going to be in the, in the picture. So that's what you see in white here, is things that are alerted that I want to talk to him about when we meet. All right. So, you know, he had an interception on a seam read. You know, I want to talk to him about this. All right. So, again, this there's so much information here and it's so visual that you'll be able, one, to get a good feel for the quarterback, what you want to do with him. And two, uh, it gives you a feel for your offense. You know, when are, where's your actual hit uh, hit list? Okay, and what you're good at and what you need to work on in the coming weeks, months, uh, and whatnot. All right. Once you've done all that, once you've compiled all that data, once you have it all together, then you could fill out the evaluation report. Okay. And I'll spend a few minutes on the evaluation report and then open it for questions. So, first of all, this is the model that we have as an evaluation report, okay? So, um, 
first of all, I want their testing results in front of me. So in the, in the form we've included his latest testing and what it looks like with his previous testing. Okay? I want his size, his weight, um, his school average. I want as much information as I could get on things that are measurable. All right, so this guy, this cat is 6'3", 228 pounds, you know, runs a 4'6", 5", verticals 34. Yeah, I'm not going to read everything to you there, but whoops. But, you know, you could see just from looking down the line here, this guy spends some time in the gym. It tells me something at least about his competitive toughness off the field. The guy wants to get better, wants to get strong, wants to be – uh, a physical football player understands what you need to do. All right. Then we go into each critical trait. All right. So our first trait was mental processing. I will put my notes down. And usually there's another coach looking at the same guy. And we don't have another quarterbacks coach, but our, for example, our receiver coach, Coach Vertulo spent a lot of times at Queens coaching the quarterbacks and was the passing game coordinator there. So I asked him, for example, to take a look at a quarterback or whatnot. Now, his comments would be in another color, okay, so, so that you get more than one eye on the same guy. Now, most of – obviously, most of them are my comments because I'm, I'm, the, uh, I'm the guy, I'm the position coach there. Okay, but the types of stuff you want to use, again, and this is the, the art of the evaluation, is you want to try to use the grading scale words within your comments. Okay, so if you go in the pro, uh, the pro comments here, um, the first one says understands his reads and can properly ID prop, uh, the proper defender key. Okay. That one doesn't actually use it, but look at the following one. Good ability to get signal and make the proper line call. Solid to good ability to make the read and release the ball. Solid ability to determine which type of read. Is it a numbers progression? Is it, you know, is it a numbers read? Is it a progression read? Is it a free safety read? Is it a missy read? Whatever you want to call your reads. Um, so that's on his good side. What, what does he need, you know? Uh, adequate situational awareness, you know, does, he's only adequate at that. So he's, a, I'm giving him basically a three mark on his situational awareness. Uh, you know, I feel he needs to improve his read score in 12 on 12 to be able to jump from being a solid. I gave him a solid grade here. You could see the, the, the grade I gave him on this was four at the end of the day. Okay. Well, to get a five, I feel he needs to get better at his reads in 12 on 12. Okay, um, just a just a, a side note here. You know, we try when we do evaluations with guys to talk to them not in negative terms, like, "Hey, you don't, you know, you didn't read well in twelve on twelve." We always talk about hey, you need to improve on this, or you, uh, you know, that's something you haven't developed yet. But we're, we we'll try not to stay away from the get negative. All right, um, competitive toughness. So, you know, good physical toughness, aggressive runner and thrower, won't back down or get intimidated, doesn't get too high, but is an emotional football player, okay? And you'll see that that comes down and it comes back. Good performer in the weight room and wants to do things right, has influence with players, did everything for the team in 2019 knowing he would not play. That shows me a lot, okay? So just some, some little tidbits that – are indicators of his competitive toughness. Well, how does he perform on the on the big downs? We don't know. Okay, uh, he didn't get many live reps. Uh, you know, he can get emotional, let things get to him. All right. So, you know, at the end, his off the field ethic, his preparation, his physical toughness outweighed the things I don't know about him yet. Okay, um, so I gave him a four on competitive toughness. And you'll see later in poise, I made, I adjusted uh, what I thought. Um, so is this athletic ability, you know, uh, another coach could have written solid AA. It shows when he sidestep, climb, escape from pocket. So again, we're trying to find indicators on the film. 
shows his capability in the product, not sudden, but he's explosive uh, and strong, okay? I wrote, won't shake anybody in the open field. So you kind of get the athlete that could move, but he's not going to beat somebody one-on-one necessarily shaking them. He might use more his physical straight. So again, we, we give him a four, all right? Play speed, you know, again, it's a combination of his athletic ability and his mental process. So we want to go back and look at what we wrote in those two and kind of make an idea on that. So given that we gave him an athletic ability seven, a, a four and mental process of four, he should fall close to the four. All right. Um, you know, in the cons I wrote can get stuck in the mud when staring around instead of progressing to, to next throw, but it's not recurrent enough for me to say, no, nah, he's a three. He's only adequate. Okay. He, I feel he does this at an average U sport level. And again, you, I know when you hear most people, when they hear um, average, they feel it's not good, but average in, in our terminology, it means solid. It means at par with other, with the average uh, quarterback starter at U sport. Okay. Um, you know, he's got a good play strength. He's well, a well-built athlete. Uh, I haven't seen him take a hit yet, but we feel he's a five. Look at his testing numbers. I think for a quarterback, he's ample. He, uh, his physical, you know, his physical uh, acumen is, is uh, healthy enough. And so when we look at all that, I don't know if I have it here yet. So when you look at that here, that gives him for this section here a 3.94 score. So just, you know, very close to that four, that solid that we're looking for. Um, whoops. Uh, now we look at the other part of it. So accuracy. All right. So now I can mix in some of the stuff that we, uh, we saw, you know, he's got a solid adjusted completion rate for team periods. I mean, I could have written adequate to solid. Uh, good adjusted completion rate for Skelly's at 75. Solid to good accuracy on short and intermediate throws. Okay. And then on the cards, adequate pure accuracy, meaning optical, optical, uh, optimal location. You know, I put his scores that, that bother me. Uh, you know, needs to improve team adjusted completion rate, adequate accuracy on uh, deep throws, especially three arc throws. So I know with this kid, I need to work the three yard throw right now. You know, um, his poise. I like his preparation. I think sometimes he needs to manage his high lows better. Better. So we gave him a three for that. His decision making, again, you know, solid to good. Uh, Seventy three point eight uh, reads. Now remember, and I, you know, it, it could be just because he had a bunch of point fives where he overlooked the route. Uh, so you have to kind of look more in details. You know, he scored 81 in footwork. So he knows his stuff, right? Um, he needs to get better a little in terms of uh, of all this, but I think he does it well enough uh, to be considered uh, solid, okay? I think he could overthink sometimes, for example. His arm strength, solid to good arm strength in the short and intermediate game can throw the intermediate inside field game with a one arc. That to me is an indicator that he could fit it in the window pretty good. Um, you know, adequate arm strength to stretch the field with accuracy. So I still gave him a four. Again, another coach in the room could argue he's a three. Some other person could argue he's a five. At the end of the day, I fell on the four grade. Okay. Ability to extend plays. Good ability to strap, scramble, extend, and find a receiver. Uh, I do watch all the clips where he scrambled uh, also uh, in terms of this evaluation, uh, but he's able to extend uh, pretty well, uh, very above average. Okay, so if you don't contain him, he's going to hurt you, all right? And then, you know, can he be the CEO uh, of the offense uh, or the team? Um, again, his off-field preparation and dedication and the, how he is on the field demonstrate he has those those that solid ability to be a CEO. He's the same guy day in and day out. He's, he, you know, he really worked on, I note here, he really worked on, you know, his communication with the O-line and keeping them up. Um, you know, 
I think at this point I wrote, he's solid going on good. So again, you know, as you're writing your notes, note down whatever, more information is better than, uh, bad, you know, no information. Okay. I think he could be more, a more vocal player. Uh, he's a, he's vocal with a hand group, a hand full of a uh, group of guys. I would like them to extend. And I think if he ends up being our starter, uh, you know, he can probably, uh, move, move up with that. Uh, so at the end of the day, um, you know, sorry, he, in the first section, he had 4.15 in the second section, he had 3.94. So at the end his total player evaluation. I was telling you, we need, we want to give him a grade at the end of the day. Well, he's a 4.03. So to me, he's a solid U sports starter. Okay. So when I'm game planning, when I'm talking, when I'm, when I, when I'm, when we're talking as a staff, we know we've got a solid QB. All right. Let me open it up for questions. Cause we've got nine minutes left. Uh, you've got my info here. You could feel free to send me uh, an email anytime. Uh, if we need to get on a zoom call or a team's call or whatever, we'll definitely do so. Thank you guys for listening.